Well, welcome here. We're on sitting on the back of a super yacht in Monaco. Can you believe that? And I, look, I'm here with an actor. Now, this guy, talk about triple threat. This guy has more threats than John Gotti. <laughs> Fuck me. Like, <laughs> unbelievable. Superstar. Temi Hassan. Welcome, mate. Oh, good to be here. Thank you. I call it entertainment. Well, no, but... I just call the threats entertainment. It's just entertainment. Mate, say you're such a violent man. Oh, mate, you're a good man. But you're, like, you're a British actor, British um, actor. best known... Um, if you're all obviously Danny Dyer, um, the Football Factory. Football Factory, yeah. the business. I've done six films with Danny. Wow. Yeah, Danny, we uh, we dominate the British film industry for a little while. Can I ask a question? Oh, I watched that show called um, Who Do You Think You Are? And and apparently he has royal blood. Is that true? Come on. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Got to be a stitch he's up. Not, he's not going to like this, but... <laughs> I reckon every single person in the UK has got some kind of a little bloodline there. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. because it's Danny Dyer... We have to celebrate it, don't we? It's Danny Dyer. It's, you know, he's something. He's something. Uh, I don't know, 180 next to the throne or something. So, so, and he's dining out on it as well. Well, I've never met. I've never met the guy, but he seems real. He's, he's real, isn't he? He's, he's a real. He's like, a beautiful human yeah, being. He seems he's that way. So much Man, fun. You can tell. Easy to. If you can't get on with Danny, you can't get on with anyone. Yeah. He's such a lovely and funny. It's funny yeah. It's, so Tam, I'm not allowed to swear on my. So mate, said the F word. Then, I, so. I've got a sporting background. Um, yeah. Played cricket professionally. Yeah. Um, also played in a rock and roll band called Six and Out. Nice. We weren't great. We got signed to EMI Records. Was you better than Russell Crowe? Of course. Sweet. Forty odd foot of what? Know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but so I've got three kids now, and um, so there's three rules that I have with my kids. Education non-negotiable. Yeah, I want them to play a, um, a, team a team sport, so yeah. they look after others, and I want them to do an art, so they just understand different people. Good. So, you, you, you started in boxing before you went to acting. Yeah. Talk, talk me through that. Yeah, uh, great with, with your kids. Though. I, I, I've kind of got that as well. Uh, I like. I always sent my kids out to learn three sports, not one. Three different sports a yep. day. Find the one yep. that you're good at. And all great athletes have got two good sports in them. Of course. They? Yeah. Um, Boxing, yeah, boxing for me, uh, it wasn't a choice. I never wanted to be a boxer, but growing up, I was born in the 60s in uh, in London. There wasn't yep. a lot of immigrants there. There was there was the Cypriots, the Irish, and the West Indians. Yeah. Um, and well, we, was that New Cross? You, New Cross, yeah. yeah New Cross, Old yep. Kent Road, South East London. Most of the Turks migrated to North London, and they're still there, but my mum didn't want to be around them. She was a bit of a hippie chick, and she, she was like, even by her name, she went, I've refused to call my kids Ali and Mustafa, and I'm not <laughs> sitting in North London with all the Turks. So she went to South East London, and we grew up there. But it was a it was a tough time. It was very racist. Um, I say racist. I don't like using the word racist because I, I had black geezers calling me the N word and beating me up. It was just a really weird. Really? Yeah, it was a really weird time to be alive. Do you think time to be you a think kid. Ignorance, ignorance was ignorance, part of that. And kids are spiteful, aren't they? Kids are yeah, more they spiteful are. than men. That, uh, grown ups, they just don't understand. But for me, and I was a very rebellious kid. I mean, if you look at me now, I'm six foot three and. A, and built like a, a yeah. built like a fridge, and um, <laughs> but, but, but then I was I was very small, chubby little Turk, pure white I was, believe it or not, with loads of air, and I'd get bullied, but I'd, I had a big heart, and I kept fighting back. So is that why you started boxing at age ten? Well, my mum put me in there. My mum started me off. My mum put me in there. There's a there's an old friend, a family friend of ours called Ginger May, and he was the boxing coach. He was very much like Mickey out of Rocky, yeah, that guy, roll up in his mouth, could do a hundred sit ups. You know, smoking with a whiskey. Old school strong man. Took every kid under his wing. Every kid under his wing. Yeah. And my mum went to see him. She said, I don't know what to do. And she took me to judo. I ended up beating up people on the mat. It was like, yeah. it just, I just couldn't be bullied anymore. So I kept fighting back. And then she, he, went, give him, she, she, he went, give him to me. And the minute I went in that, that boxing, it wasn't a boxing, it was a church hall. Yeah, the minute okay. I went in there, it was, it was as if I just calmed down. Because you're getting hit now, and you, you're learning the discipline, and you know you you're starting to do as you're told. And I, I, he put me with my big brother. He used to bully me a lot, and I, I think I, I, I did. I broke his nose. Um, oh yeah. And he went, "You can do that." But was too, that was that brother. the first sort of group of people that you felt like you belonged? Yeah. 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 I'm glad you picked that up because yeah. you don't feel you don't feel like you belong anywhere. And it's weird because, and this is what eliminated uh, racism for me. The age of 12, I went to Cyprus, our motherland. My mum took us to Cyprus. I was about 12 years old when we first went there, and I thought, you know what? I'm actually going to be accepted here. So we've gone to wow. the village, and I thought, this is it. I'm going to my motherland. I'm not going to get called names. The minute I landed, the second day, the village kids called me an English bastard and beat the shit out of me. <laughs> 
So, so, you so, so the, the thing, racism just went. It's just kids being spiteful and, and just horrible. You know, it's, I've interviewed many um, ex-sportsmen um, and actors and, and musicians. I've had, you know, guys like from EXS on my show. Sure. Um, well, when people normally talk about something that comes from their youth, mm. there's when they say it, there's an underlying mm. hatred. I, I don't get that from you no. at all. No, this is not like, at all. Not, not I one have, bit. I have no regrets. Listen, growing up... Oh, no, and I really believe that. Yeah, no, growing up, it was tough and it was... You know, I remember my, my favourite song was You Ain't Heavy, You're My Brother, and I yeah. to sit and play, and I, I was always about just being mates and trying to be mm. accepted and it's difficult when you're a foreigner in a, fo in a foreign land when it well, I wasn't a foreigner in a foreign land I was a Brit you know I you was born Brit. there and I was a Brit and it was just difficult of that time but growing up if if I didn't start accepting it and I'm, I'm very good at working things out I'm yeah. putting a shoe on the other foot and I have been like that since I was a kid because I've had to adapt and that's, so a, that's just, survival so yeah so I, I work it out and if it doesn't if it doesn't meet somebody else's understanding, I make it understandable in my own head, and that's enough for me. So I tell myself this is what it is, and that's wow. what it is. And I put, I learned at a very young age to put people in boxes, and, and uh, uh, you know, an older, yeah. wiser man. It was not, coff not coffins. Not well. <laughs> <laughs> not, not boxes. Different sort of boxes. But yeah. in my mind, boxes. Metaphorical boxes. Me <laughs> met metaphorical boxes. And if you're, <laughs> if you're continuously a liar and a piece of shit, you go in that box. Yeah. If you're a great person, you go in that box. And so then I know what I'm expecting in places and yeah. scenarios where I'm going, so it doesn't bother me anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? No, you, you, got, you got a great attitude. So before we get to the acting stuff, yeah. so I said you started boxing at 10. By 17 years of age, you won two British titles. Man, how'd that feel? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Did So from the, age, the boy who was age 10 to then 17, what was the big difference then to you? Did you feel that you were... Nine, I started yeah. being disciplined and understanding... Discipline. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's it. It's discipline. Yeah. And understanding, you know, what... And Ginger May was... He was like a father figure. He wasn't just a boxing coach. He would make you understand what your actions create, the ripple yes. effect it creates on your parents and your mum. man. Stuff like that. And I was very rebellious as a kid. I got knocked over. I must have broke every bone in my body. I got knocked over nine times if I was like 12. Because my mum used to say, you're not allowed out. And I used to jump out the window run around dogs chasing me getting knocked over I got knocked over I got run over by a milk float for crying out loud Jesus L literally but I've, I've run across the yeah. road the one way system I remember mum screamed oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. I've run across the road and I've slipped and the milk float went over my leg and it stayed on my leg and I remember I had a big scab on my leg and none of the kids <laughs> in school bad milk. None, of the kids, <laughs> none of the kids in school would come near me they called me the boogeyman I was, just, I was ostracised like no one coming because I had a big scab on my leg I just want to pick up one point you said there <laughs> we've just met but um, I, I, you just said you're 55 you, you're, you're a grandfather of two yeah those lessons you just talked about did you use those with your kids? yes I bet you did yeah. I did my yeah. son I my son were, I had a little bit of a um, a lay down, I had Her Majesty Pleasure for yep. fighting. I was a bit of a tear away and uh, went to jail and my son was conceived on my home leave, believe it or not, when I was 20 really? years old. Yeah, this is an exclusive. Not a lot of people know this. Wow. I'm happy to talk about it. I've, I've freed my, my regrets and yeah. my actions of what I did as a young son. I'm free from it now. So I'm happy to talk about where I'd hide things all the time. But I'm not. My, my son, I had him when I was 20 years old my best friend. Uh, I started fathering them from the day they were born. Oh, I had a rule, gaga, ga, go, go, go never, never did any of that. Yeah, yeah. Raised him hard, had yeah. my daughter. Uh, One rule in my house, don't disrespect kids. your mother. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so One rule, that's I said, it. at 17 you won two British titles, yeah. then you got injured. Then, right. then, then you turned to what I'm going to term the, the, the school of life. You've done your you, work, you, you, start, you opened up restaurants and nightclubs. <laughs> oh, he's done his work. I like it. Um, yes, I did. I, I'll, I'll run through it, because otherwise we're going to be here forever. Um, I'm enjoying this, mate. But yeah, bless you. But um, we did the boxing, got through the boxing. That taught me discipline, um, respect, and calmed me down. Because when we was a kid, you'll probably know yourself, when you're, in a bo when you're a boxer, people leave you alone. Yeah. And yeah. the girls love you. Yeah. Right? The girls love you. Win-win. You can always say that. You know, people of yeah. our, our time, that was it. Boxer, girls, people leave you alone. Don't touch mm. me as a boxer. Which, bizarrely, from the time after a year, I didn't get my medical and I trained. And then when I first started fighting, I actually didn't want to hit anyone. No. Because it's not nice being hit. 
because you're in that gym every day and it fucking know, hurts, doesn't it? So you, you start thinking, yeah. if I hit you, I'm going to hurt you. Yeah. And if you hit me back, it's going to hurt me. So you yeah. kind of go like, no problem. And then people kind of leave you alone. But then it, I, went, I went and did what I had to do. And then we stopped doing that about the early 20s, mid-20s. And then I started nightclubs and restaurants. I was actually a painting decorator before. Jesus. Yeah, I was a painting decorator. My... my uh, See, see that, that, that now that's one role I don't see you being no, that patient enough to do. And a good one. Really? Yeah. Like, so gold you, leaf. You're, you're very precise, are oh, you? Oh, mate. Do, do you hang your, your clothes and you cover it in in? You have colour? no idea. Colour coordination. <laughs> Even down to fabrics. I'm good at this shit, mate. <laughs> Even down to fabrics. Cashmere yeah, yeah. goes with really? cashmere. And all your shoes are in order? Go, go down yeah. and look at the cabin. <laughs> I love it. Go down and look at the cabin. They're all lined up <laughs> on the floor. Go in the car, all done. And I have to unpack as soon as I land anywhere. I feel like I know you more better than anyone <laughs> yeah, ever I, hey, and, I, and I don't think that's a bad thing. No, it's a great and thing. And that comes from my father. A discipline. My father would wear a suit, a beautiful tailor, two-tone yep. tapered suit, to walk to the shop to buy a newspaper. Yeah. You, and and you, 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 never know, you never know who you're going to meet on, on yeah, the way out. Yeah, I, I agree. Like first impressions last. So now now we get to acting. And yeah. so, well, just before acting, you, you said downstairs Night that you, 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 loved, you loved rugby as well. Yeah, I played a lot of rugby. I, I was, I, thought, I think I was quite good at it because I played in the Barclays Sevens when yeah. I was a kid. I went, I got a scholarship and went to Haberdashers, yeah. which is a private school. And I was probably one of the first ones to get. I, mean, I think the gradings were one one ones, two 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 three three three. I got a one one two, and you needed a one 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 to even get considered for a scholarship. But when I went to see the headmaster, Mr. Walker, my handwriting was so beautiful. I used to write with ink and a Perth, flat nib, yeah. and I used to write. And he said, "Your handwriting's so fantastic." I couldn't draw for shit, but no. my handwriting, I used to really write. I was the same, actually. I used to flow yeah. my writing, you know, with flat nibs, yeah. remember the ink yeah, yeah, yeah. pens, and I used to really take my time. And he went, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pass you and I'm going to give you a scholarship for your handwriting. He said, you got the two, but I shouldn't read, but your handwriting's really good. And I, and I think you're going to be an asset to the school. I wasn't. I got expelled about 30 <laughs> times. Poor man. But, 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 but he let me in and it opened doors for my brothers and sisters because once you're in, they're allowed to come and they kind of get a straight pass in. And I went down, I, I started, a, I shot up at the age of 15, 16. Right. And I was like a race hawk. So I was yeah, always, yeah. Yeah. I was like 11 stone too. Yeah. I was lithe, a light yeah. wire. I was yeah. fast. I was yeah. wiry. I was yeah. strong. Powerful. And then I started playing rugby, and I was playing in the first sixteen. I was fourteen when I when I was playing with wow. the sixth formers, kind of illegally, but legally. And then they, I got up to, uh, I got, went and played in the Barclays Sevens with them. But my passion was always football. I always used to want to be a footballer for some reason. Uh, and we didn't. Did have your no family football. own a club at some stage? Yeah, so? we're, they, we're, I own Greenwich Borough Football Club. Wow. Um, for quite a while for 15 years um, and I actually bought it because Kent that area they were a little bit racist when I was growing up and I used to play for a lot of Kent clubs and I played for them and I'd get on I'd score a goal and then they'd sub me like sub the sub and they, they oh, kind right. of they kind of but I, I was so resilient and so in love with the sport I didn't want to let it bother me people were going what are you doing you're being abused you're... and I went I don't care they, I, they, been... spell, they spell that county name wrong don't they yeah, yeah, it's just like, and they do things like, so So you know what I did? I went and bought the club. Yeah. And fired all of them. So you're the original Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I went, no, but I went and bought the club <laughs> and got rid of the whole committee. All of them, gone. Now, mate, and, and filled the club with Turks. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, and we went and done a lot of send-offs. And we went and done the double, and we went and won everything. <laughs> yeah, we went and won everything. Mate, so, so uh, what a great story, right? So you've gone all through that, the, the young kid that was sort of tormented at school, goes yeah. in the box, he to defend himself gets some self-belief, then he goes into, you know, become a champion boxer, gets injured, works in nightclubs. You end up in acting. Like, mate, yeah, how do you get from there to there? It's a mad story. That's do, probably... do, do you think without your upbringing you could ever become an actor that you are today? Ooh, I'm assuming No, you no 100%. 100% my... Listen, you can't go to school yeah. and learn how to be a villain. No. You can't. Do you enjoy you being a villain? You can't. <laughs> I'm too ugly to be the romantic lead. They're only going to give me the bad one. But I always say, there's an art in killing and being killed. Yeah, yeah. And that's not easy. For an actor, you ask any actor, there's an art in killing and there's an art in being killed. And I think I'll do it better than anyone. Um, but for me... What's been your favourite role of all time? You were in Batman Begins. That was a small role. Yeah, I small. took that role. That was a tiny role because I'm a mad Batman fan since I was a kid. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Is Batman a superhero? What, what's his special power, apart from being rich? He can fly, can't he? Can he? 
Yeah, well, uh, don't know, anyway. No, 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 I like it. I like, no, I like that. Let's, yeah. let's get into yeah. that. I like it. Yeah. What is his superpower? He's a bat, isn't he? Yeah, he had a little mate. Strong Robin. as an ox. I mean, he picked up Tom Hardy, didn't he? Yeah, a nice car. Picked up Tom Hardy <laughs> and slung him across the, across the cars, didn't he? So he's a strong boy. Did, um, did you have um, read comics when you were a kid? No, I wasn't no, a comic either. man. I wasn't a geek. I wasn't a collectible. I wasn't a man who collected things. I was very driven towards what I wanted. I was subconsciously manifesting things before people even knew what manifestation was. If you look at my house, my mum would tell you, my brothers would tell you, everyone had, I mean, I did have Madonna up on the wall because I fancied the pants off of her when I was yeah, a kid. I think it was, like everyone yeah. else did. Um, yeah. Desperately seeking shoes and lucky stuff, all of that. She lost a bit there towards the end. She, yeah, yeah, well, I was done by then. I was I yeah. moved on. <laughs> she, she only had about two years on my wall then she was gone. I don't hang about them. <laughs> he knows. He knows. Yes. But I, I would have properties. He's got a big wall at home. Has he got a big wall? Yeah. Are they all on there? Yeah, they are. Am I on there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on there. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, so I, I would always have cars. Okay. I was obsessed with cars, properties, and that was it. Yeah. I was always obsessed with big houses. No, sorry, boats as well and jets. I was, for some reason, a kid that comes out the flats. That's I was a little street rat. I was a little poor kid. But that, it's that is right. But, it, but it's almost it's a, it's, a, it's like self fulfilling prophecy where. You, it, you don't mean to do it, but it's like... Yeah, yeah it's, it's you're, subconsciously you're, 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 you're manifesting it. Yeah, I've made I want it. it. I've come through it. Yeah, and, I, and, and I've I'm, all, I'm a boy done good. And I, and I remember when we used to go... I'm a Millwall supporter because I'm a great believer... Can I ask you that? Yeah, so, I'm a great believer of supporting your local team. And then we couldn't afford to go in. But years ago, at half-time, they'd open the gate and let you in. But at first off, there was a hill that we that we could climb up and we'd call it Jew Boys, Jew Boys Hill because we'd all stand up there and watch the first half and then run down and they'd open the gates and we'd go. And it was the old days of the territory. Yeah, yeah. But I always used to watch and I said, look at these players on that pitch getting cheered like gladiators. Mm. And I always wanted, I remember very vividly, yep. I always wanted to be a somebody. I always wanted to be someone. You've definitely done that, mate. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but I never wanted to cue. And it wasn't a look at me. It wasn't like I'm... Um, it was just something I always aspired to be. I always felt I was different. And I'll tell you later on how I knew I was. I always thought I didn't belong. It, it, you know, it transpired later on that my father who raised me wasn't my father. Oh, wow, man. My mum kept that secret for 27 years. Um, Jesus. So, and I, that was what it was. There was something. Have you met your real father? Can I ask that question? Or you have to I didn't want to meet him. Okay. He, he was disgusting to my mother. He yeah. broke her back, put her in a halfway home. Horrible, I was mate. six months old. My brother was three years old. And it was a recurring thing what the piece of shit did. He did it prior to us and he did it yeah. after us. So I didn't want to meet him. I was like, you ain't my dad. Like, go away from me. Because yeah. he actually called my nightclub and, and my brother picked up the phone and blessed my brother. He was uh, an alcoholic at the time. And it really affected him, my mum said, later on in life when he left because he was three years old and he had a relationship mm. with him. And he's got on the phone. He said, "He said it's your dad." He went, "Oh, dad, dad, it's me. It's it's like your son." And he's gone to him because my brother wasn't anything. He's always something to me. But because he wasn't a stature, he was like, that's, "Oh, that, I'll that's give not, me that's not a dad. And I, yeah, I just got on the phone. I said, "What do you want?" He said, yeah. "I want to see." I said, "If I see, I'm going to break your back." Yeah, good on just you. like he did, my mum. Are you okay with that? Because if you yeah. are, come down. Come down, mate. Yeah. Never heard from him. Again. No, I'm sorry to hear that, mate. Yeah, no, it's well, all, yeah. listen, listen. There's never anything that I will sell, tell you today yeah. that I ever worry about or people like my father passed to two years ago and people go I'm sorry and I go it's fine it's, fine. it's funny it's like um, when you said you, you, you follow Millwall yeah. two names come to mind Vinnie Jones yeah fighter yeah a, a guy who went from sport know aggressive to I'll, acting I'll know. and you, Timmy Cahill well, Timmy Cahill gonna... Australian who started his career there yeah. and Timmy started by kicking the shit out of people on the football field and he made his name at Millwall Timmy Cahill is a very good friend of mine yeah and, and I love Tim Good friend he's, of mine. He's too. over in. Uh, yeah. He's over in uh, Qatar. Yeah, the yeah. Qatar. Right? Yeah. I see him at the World Cup. Yeah, and we had a lot. We had a nice Superstar, hug. Yeah, and we we looked after him when he was a player. Yeah, he's a tell good, you. good guy, mate. If you see him again, just oh, say. Oh yeah, we well, really good mates with my brother Brett. So yeah, always, yeah. He's, he's a wonderful human and what a player. Yeah, really good player. Tearing tearing chunks out of people, but yeah, boy, he's, he's passionate. He was an Aussie. They, Aussies are built that way, didn't you? Yeah, you ain't gonna beat an Aussie. They'll die before you beat them. Do you know what I mean? That's well, how you we're, boys we're, are built. Yeah, we're pretty tough. We, we tough boys, give a go. Yeah, that's the way you do. And it. that's how he is. And uh, and Vinny, yeah, I've known Vinny for many years. I don't know where you're going with this, but no, no. Look, man, I just want to end with. Um, so we're here at Monaco. Yeah. You mentioned you love cars. Are you excited about the race? Very excited. Yeah. I, who, I, who do you think's going to win? 
Verstappen, unfortunately, I reckon. Yeah, I just want Lewis can, to come can back. Can Lewis do it? He's, he's won it three times. To come back to his he's won it three form. times. I know, but I love Lewis. He's just, yeah, blame the car, blame this, blame 2019, he's due. Yeah, three or four years I just want him to, because I'm terrified that he's going to call his retirement soon. And he, you know when, you, when, you, when you've when you been following someone and loving a sports star, like Beckham and all these yeah. great, and they retire and it's just... Give him a decent car. It's heartbreaking, yeah. yeah. But is it the car, ain't it the car? Is it this, is it that? Everyone's got an excuse. Lewis, just win, please, for me. Just Lewin, I just want him. But the guys, yeah, Verstappen and them boys, they're just... They're another level, isn't they? And it's their time. And I do believe that with racing, it's, if it's your time, it's your time. Oh, 100%. Well, tell you what, Tam, that's one of my favourite interviews I've ever done. You, you Thank are you. a really nice fellow, mate. Yeah, you're easy, you're easy to talk yeah. to. You're good, you're good at what you do. Thanks, mate. Pleasure was all mine. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Afternoon Sport Monaco series. Don't miss an episode. Find us wherever you listen to your podcasts, on YouTube or any of our social media platforms, afternoonsport.com.